So it was Microsoft's new Copilot announcement yesterday, Copilot for Microsoft 365 Wave 2. They've never done Copilot and Waves before. So if you're confused about, did they announce anything new? What was exciting about it? Maybe you didn't watch it at all. We're gonna go through all of the stuff, my take on it, and let's get straight into it. But just before we do, if you are new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime. I'm really passionate about helping people save time at work and help organizations work better together happening to use Microsoft 365. But let's get straight into the Microsoft announcement. They've changed Copilot for Microsoft 365, which is a bit of a mouthful, to Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is how most people call it anyway. They're also making changes to the free one, which they're still just calling Microsoft Copilot, as far as I'm aware. So there's free Copilot and paid Copilot is how most people think about it. If you pay for Copilot for Microsoft 365, that's where you get Copilot in every other Microsoft app, pretty much and in Teams, and in Excel, and in wherever, and it's got access into all of your internal data, all secure, and it can go and find stuff for you and hopefully make your life a little bit easier. So as well as that rename, they've also renamed, which I hope this doesn't catch on, Copilot in within Microsoft 365 to business chat. In the free one, you could, if you had a paid subscription, you could flip between web and work. If you were in Teams, you couldn't flip between those two, it was just work. And if you wanted to go to the web, you had to go out to Edge. Seems like they've changed that now, and then they're calling that business chat, which they're shortening to biz chat, which I hope doesn't catch on, because I think that sounds a bit naff, to be honest. But useful now that they've got that toggle back so you can flip into the web wherever you're getting Copilot from. That was good. The main thing that they really seemed to want to push was Copilot pages. So they've got web, work, and pages was their sort of main tagline. And in the demo, they sort of said, well, you know, if you're having a Copilot chat, that's just sort of your view into AI and not anyone else can sort of collaborate on it. So their solution is to like, well, if you're working with Copilot and then you've got some a good answer, then maybe you can like pin it into Copilot page so you can edit it in pages and click that button. And that seems to open a loop panel at the side, but they were very careful to not say loop, bizarrely. So it's quite clearly using loop, looks exactly the same, it works exactly the same, it's got it's got the same UI, but it seems to be separate. So it's not clear that that loop, that, that page is gonna show up in loop. So it's got, in this example, you can add other people into that Copilot page whilst you're using Copilot. It's not that clear where you invite someone what their view is, like how they would enter it from a link. I guess it might jump them into Copilot in Teams or the web where they can see the same thing as you and they can all add AI things or manually put stuff in just like loop into that Copilot page. But at least from my perspective, if you wanna work like that and collate something into a page, surely it would go into loop first and then just have Copilot in loop, which they'd already announced and didn't re-announce in this announcement, um, which I thought was a bit strange that they just didn't mention loop uh, at all. But um, but there we are. So it would make more sense for me to go into loop page, have everyone already assigned into that workspace or into that page, and then you collaborate and bring Copilot in where you need stuff to help to go in, rather than starting Copilot and then think, oh, actually, I want to put this into a loop page that they're not really a loop page and people have to go into Copilot to get back to that page. So the only documentation that's out so far is that if you want to get back to that Copilot page, you've got to go into the Copilot chat and then find the chat you've done and find that page, which is bizarre rather than just going into loop and you can just use loop if you're used to using loop workspace. So I thought that was strange, but good addition. So they are, I guess they're trying to solve for if you're having loads of chats, it's quite ephemeral, goes off the page. Rather than copying it, pasting somewhere, you can just directly put it into a Copilot page, which I kind of get. Don't know if it was just me, but the example that they showed of like everyone going in and adding stuff in, I was like, oh yeah, I've brought this out of a previous document, I've brought this out of the web, and I've put, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like an absolute nightmare to keep track of what's going on. It's like, why, why have you pulled that out? Hang on, we're not doing that. It's like, everyone stop. Um, that just looked like a bit of chaos to me. But going into a page, I can see if you want to pull a bit of AI in to summarize some stuff for you, that would be useful. Um, so good addition in overall, but uh, strangely announced. So if you have an inkling that you might be more productive or not getting the most out of Microsoft, 
then you can either watch these videos on YouTube for free, make sure you subscribe because there's new ones coming out every week, or you can book a call using the link in the description below to have a chat to see if we could do something together to improve the way you're working, people's well-being at work, and increase sales. Copilot in Excel was next, so they said it's now in general availability. I didn't know it wasn't in general availability already. I don't know if it was just in beta, maybe beta if you're English. I'm not sure, but that's the one thing that I don't find that useful because I am pretty good at Excel. Getting geeky about the announcement and into Excel, one of the things they showed was like, oh, you can bring all your data in and people use, you know, use Excel to analyze data, which is true. Even if people have got Power BI and loads of analytics tools and stuff in organizations tend to just like, just well, let's just lob some data into Excel and do something quick, in my experience, rightly or wrongly. But yeah, it seems like it can do more stuff. I'm still a bit skeptical because Excel, if it was in beta, didn't work particularly well in my experience. So I remain healthily skeptical, but if it does work, great. But some of the demos that they showed in Excel previously worked in the demo, and then when you tried it in like real life data, it's a bit more messy than how they'd set it up. It didn't really work, it's quite slow. Obviously, they also announced they've changed the model to ChatGPT 4.0 now in back end of Copilot, so that should be a lot faster. And they obviously, they've paid OpenAI loads of money. They're going to be getting OpenAI's O1 model, which has got greater reasoning, which was recently announced, which we'll do a video on if that is useful at work coming out in a few weeks as well. So if you're interested in that or the other one on how to get more stuff out of Copilot for free, then Microsoft probably doesn't really want you to know, then click the subscribe button. We've got both those videos coming out soon, if not already at the time you watch this video. Also, to say reasons over text now, although spot the deliberate mistake. It's like, oh, I can reason over text. So if you've got like a download of customer queries, it said, oh, you can ask it, um, summarize the top three customer concerns, which it does do very well, because AI is very good at summarizing text. I find that is the best thing it does, which is why the number one thing that people use Copilot for is Teams meeting summarization. So it did that well, but then it's like, it said, oh, highlight reviews that mention the issues related to slow charging speeds. But then when it actually did the conditional formatting, it says text contains slow. So it's like, well, that isn't what, that isn't the gist, because you could have had slow to respond, slow custom service, slow something else. Actually, they sort of skirted over that by my eagle eye spotted that that wasn't actually mentioning all the things for slow charging speeds. It was quite, you know, a basic thing of like, well, you could have just done a conditional formatting that for yourself it didn't really do much that was that intelligent. Excel now using Python and then Copilot in Excel being able to use Python as well. I have never used Python because I was out of data analysis jobs when that was all very, very trendy. If you do do that and uh, that's useful to you, great, that's now in Copilot, it seemed to work well. Copilot in Excel can use Python now and do all of that coding for you and make nice bar charts and things. For you as well. Copilot and PowerPoint they've tried to make a little bit better because that was pretty naff and they said it could use the template of your organization but it didn't really do it that well so it seems like they've had lots of updates to make that better. Also we've got Copilot like story narrative builder, a story builder, narrative builder so it says create a presentation about blah 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 and it can use your company branded guidelines now presumably better than it did before, which it didn't really do very well. And before it creates the slides, it says, this is what we're gonna do slides about. So it shows you like the narrative and you can then you know, insert slides, ask it to use other documents to bring stuff in. Yeah, having used the, the previous version, I'm still skeptical about this, whether that's actually gonna be useful. If you know something about the subject that you're doing, you can probably write it quicker than the AI could do it. So when in the example, let's say I'll bring in some benefits from this Word document, well, you would know the benefits anyway, presumably, and you could just write them out. So the presentation shouldn't have a lot of stuff in them. It's talking about it that's, that's you know, the issue. I guess if you're creating a presentation for someone else, it's gonna put all that stuff in the notes for you, which is might save a lot of time. So then it creates the, the presentation with all your branded slides in a way that you want to see them and you've got the ability to then go and fine tune it. You can ask it to go and fetch pictures for you from your organizational assets library, which seemed pretty cool. Once you've put a picture in, 
use designer to pick from like company approved layouts which uh, it's going to be way better than before because it used your previous branding but just like stuck stuff everywhere it didn't look the same as like a normal presentation puts all the builds and stuff in for you so that might be more useful now again I remain healthily skeptical until I see it got to see it to believe it and it's not available to test yet just yet but if you are interested in seeing it in real life make sure you subscribe to the channel so we've got lots of videos on copilot planned and coming out soon copilot and teams didn't really get much but that was the main benefit of copilot microsoft 365 copilot previously was just having it integrated into teams and now which i thought was already there actually was that it now looks in meeting chat as well as the meeting transcript so if you're one of those organizations that puts loads of stuff in chat as you're meeting which i despise because it's like the same as just having a side conversation in a normal in-person meeting it's really distracting and rude to have another conversation going on while someone else is talking it's like just Take yourself off mute, put your hand up and get in the meeting once typing away in chat. Just my bugbear anyway, potentially. But, um, but yeah, if you do do that, then it can search in meeting chat as well as the meeting transcript. Copilot and OneDrive is generally available. Again, thought that was already there, but potentially not. And like we showed in a previous video where you can use Copilot to compare two contracts, you can do that straight from OneDrive, the OneDrive app. So it doesn't actually matter if your files live in SharePoint. If you go through the OneDrive app, you can still see things in SharePoint. And it seems like the compare files maybe have some uh, tweaks to it because it, it shows you in a table, I think, by default, rather than asking specifically to show me in a table, which I guess is what you had to do when you did it through the Copilot UI rather than in OneDrive. But you can get the same things in free, which, again, we've got a video on that coming out soon. Copilot and Word seem to get a lot of different uh, changes so you can now reference more than one file at a time to say well I need to get a response back to install our charging stations reference this PDF for specs align the response structure to this reference file so reply framework reference this meeting for the details and requirements from the RFP so that is more like what someone would want to do at work certainly myself so my, I am having free discovery calls which if you want one book a call using the link in the description below to see if we can help your organization work more efficiently, increase well-being and increase sales by happening to use more of Microsoft 365. But if we've got a discovery call and then we do end up we're a good fit to work together and me time thinks it can help that organization, we want to turn what we've talked into into a proposal and the Microsoft showed that probably a year ago and in practice didn't really work because what you want to do is say well I want the context of the meeting into the same way that I would write a proposal, um, which now looks like you can do. So if that works now, that will be really useful for me and hopefully really useful for people in sales or prospecting. You can pull out emails of context and put that into your Word document, which uh, will be useful. And then it's like, can you visual highlight this text and say, can you visualize it as tables? So some things that are gonna be really useful and save some time and very welcome and then i think lastly seem to be then borrowing concepts that apple announced from their ios 18 launch a few months ago so prioritize my inbox and just showing you more ai by default in email which is going to be more useful so the copilot in outlook before wasn't really that useful it could rewrite some things for you it could summarize emails but only after you went on the email and then you had to click summarize and wait for it to generate and then come up seems like they're borrowing from apple where actually it's summarized the preview line by default so in this one it's like rather than just having summary of like hi colin blah 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 it's like well summary is provide input on an urgent issue i need to know that so ai is really useful if it can summarize and put stuff right in front of me rather than me having to go and ask it for something by the time you've done that email just read it yourself as well as priority inbox so it'll use AI to assume for you what might be more urgent or more important than other things and then you can sort it on priority which is more useful than someone else having to say what they think their priority of the email is which most people forget to add in anyway and two it's like it's their priority not mine and then it looks like you can then tweak it in Outlook you can click on the priority and say this is high priority these topics that you pulled out if it's always this customer I want that to be high priority for me so those are some really useful smaller additions but a lot more useful than copilot in outlook was 
previously. And then Telluride wasn't Outlook that was last, it was Copilot Agents that were last. So this is something that they had announced previously and then now seems a bit more confusing, especially from a license point of view. So they'd showed being able to turn a SharePoint site into like the reference of a Copilot sort of bot before. And they showed agents, they've announced agents before where like a bot can go away and do some things for you and take actions a bit more like replacing someone's role of like, well, we're making an AI specifically for this role. They can answer people's questions and go and fire things off and take action on stuff as well, sort of independently. They now sort of rolled both those together. So the licensing's a little bit confusing because Copilot Studio, you have to pay extra for on top of the Microsoft 365 Copilot additional license. So you need everyone individually licensed for Microsoft 365 Copilot and then you need an organization license to use Copilot Studio, which makes the sort of ROI a little bit more challenging to say, well, is it actually useful to do this another additional fee? So previously it assumed if you got Microsoft 365 Copilot and SharePoint, you could use the SharePoint bit as part of that subscription. Now they've called it agent, agents using Copilot Studio. It's not clear to me at least whether you need a Copilot Studio to use the Copilot agent, even for SharePoint, but we'll see when it comes out. So you can create a Copilot agent either from SharePoint or from BizChat, which again, I hope doesn't catch on. And you can just describe like what you want it to do um, and create an agent that way. You can like tell it which knowledge to use. If you do it this way, you can use SharePoint site and then other things. So you can say, well, go into Dynamics in this example and pick out customer accounts or pick out support tickets, create the agent, and then people can just go and interact with that agent. SharePoint, similarly, you go into SharePoint, select which documents you want to use. It doesn't seem like you can just say, I want the entire document library even if I add more things into there, I guess you can pick a folder. So presumably if you put more stuff into that folder, it would pick it up. But in this example, they're highlighting the document library, which has got files in the root of the document library, which might pique someone's OCD. Say, why have you got files in the root of the folder anyway? Uh, but it looks like it might be more hard-coded. Either way, you select which ones you want to use, and then it's like, we'll create a Copilot agent just off those files, which I think is going to be the most used thing especially if you don't need a Copilot Studio license and you can just do it as part of the Microsoft 365 Copilot license, is people, especially if you've got an intranet, HR policies, it's like, well, oh, I'm trying to go through the amount of HR policies just to find out how much can I claim for lunch if I drive in the UK to uh, you know, a work visit. In a global organization, it takes, you know, can take absolutely ages. I've been there myself. Trying to find that information. If you had a Copilot agent, just say, well, just look at this for the UK. This is the UK's HR bot, or even if it's the global HR bot, you can say, what's the policy for expenses in the UK? Like, dink, and give you the answer. That's going to be probably more valuable than people will allow for when they do the ROI on it. That's hopefully coming soon. They had announced that previously, um, so that's not new, but hasn't come out yet. So hopefully it'll be coming out soon. But I think that's one that they said is gonna come out later this year, hopefully. But let me know what you think about these announcements, which one's your favorite. Let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna know more about Copilot, we've got to check out these videos next. You might like them. And uh, thanks for watching so far. Remember to give the video a thumbs up before you go, if you can, and uh, see you in the next one.